Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Matt Schmidt and I guide people to heal themselves. Um, in this video, we are going to be discussing uh, some things that will vastly improve your sessions with clients. And it doesn't matter whether you are trained in QHHT, BQH, uh, LBL, just hypnosis in general, um, or even just meditation. Maybe you do guided meditation with people, especially one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, you'll find this val this video very valuable. Uh, let me start off by saying I don't claim to have all the answers. I'm still figuring this out. I learn every single day. But I'm going to be sharing with you some of the things that really have accelerated at least I feel, my sessions. Uh, take what works for you, take what resonates with you. If it doesn't fit, cool, don't don't be like, oh, that guy, Matt, he told me about this, so I have to do this. No, you don't. Uh, figure out what works for you, and really that's what, um, that's really where the magic is, is finding your groove within this. So I'm just gonna be sharing some of the, some of the things with you, some of the tips that really have helped me, uh, what I feel really propel my work with other people. So um, one of the big things is that really has helped me is being out there, <laughs> um, doing these videos, stuff like that. Uh, by the time people get to me then, I, I have like a different type of clients because they've already watched me. They already feel that they know me, first of all. Um, and because my videos are, are helping them through some of these stages, some of that surface crap is already out of the way. So you can really move through even more because the stuff that you'd be, not really wasting your time on, but um, the stuff that you'd be spending the majority of your time on, you don't have to deal with because that stuff's out of the way and you can, they can get so much more out of, out of your one-on-one -on -one time together. Um, so that's been super, super helpful. Um, and then be, just being out there. I do a lot of guided groups, I do classes, I do workshops. Um, I also do uh, wellness fairs and stuff like that. So people feel that they already know me by the time that they, that the time by the time we get to work together, and that really takes a lot of the edge off because trust and rapport is so huge doing this work. If you don't have that level of trust, people are going to be closed off. They're not going to let their guard down. They're not going to let you in to work with them. Um, and that's really what you want to do. You want to be able to make them feel safe. You want to create a safe environment for them to open up, to be vulnerable, to say stuff that they don't feel like they could say to anyone else. And that's like an energetic thing. There's not even words that I can tell you, oh, you need to say this. It's just a feeling and they have to be able to feel that. All right. Um, another thing too, when you're um, when you're st when you're doing this too, starting out from uh, a different mindset where in the beginning, I was thinking, oh, how do I get clients and how do I make this much money and how do I do this? And those are all like all things that kind of noodle around in there. And yes, you have to make money in order to be able to do a job like this full time. I mean, that is part of it. But when I shifted how I looked at things, the rest of the stuff just worked out. I didn't have to worry about that stuff. Uh, so I, I started asking, how do I add value? Uh, how, and people can pick up on this. If you're out just to like, oh, I need to do this to make money and then I have to get the, it's a different vibration. So you're not attracting the right people. Um, when you shift that focus to how do I help? Because <laughs> that's really what you're doing. That's what people are coming to you for. Um, then that's almost like a, a magnetic attraction. You draw those people in. All right. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about what I do beforehand. I do send people an email uh, with Different videos I have, I have those videos on my YouTube channel if you want to use them, feel free to use them. Um, but it basic, basically the ones that I send them are talking about uh, expectations, letting go of those expectations because I find that that kind of gets into people's way. And also there's one about, ironically, how what to expect. <laughs> <laughs> during a quantum healing session, but just kind of just kind of a rundown of what they can kind of expect, so they're not on edge, so they can let some of those worries and concerns go, and it also kind of gives them tips for to get the most out of our time together, so they can really optimize that time together. Because a lot of the people have the same questions, and by adding those videos in, it already kind of gets their mind thinking and prepped and uh, rolling. So. Part of that email, I also include like a guided meditation too if they want to practice guided visualization. So that kind of helps them out too and starts working through some of those layers as well. Um, I also have them prepare a list of questions. Uh, the questions are important because 
some people have never thought about what they want. So that process of putting down their questions gets that ball rolling. And really by the time they get to me, a lot of them have already have like five versions of their questions because they just started figuring stuff out because <laughs> it's already working. They're figuring out in dreams or whatever the way they're figuring it out. And they come with like all these different levels of questions so we can really get more out of that time together. But really, if they come with nothing, that's okay too. Really, your soul knows what you need more than what you think you need anyway. <laughs> so um, it's okay if there's, there's no questions. But I, I do like to keep that process in there because people think about what they want. What is their goal for today? What do they even want out of this? And that really sets that intention and gets that rolling. All right, the day of, when I either meet them online or they come to my house or whatever the situation is, I make them feel comfortable. I make them know that they're in a safe environment. I And this is like an energetic thing. I want them to feel safe. And this is more feeling, not a thinking thing. So to say, oh, you need to say this to make them feel comfortable. Uh, that's, that doesn't work. So this, they're picking up on your energy. And that goes for the whole session. What you're putting out, you're getting back. So if you think this isn't working and, oh, crap, this is awful, they're going to be feeling that too, and they're going to follow you wherever you go. So be mindful of your own energy, where you're coming from, and that's huge as you go through this process. All right, so I, if they're really on edge, what you're doing too is kind of creating this like yes mindset. You want them agreeing with you, kind of following you. And if they're really on edge, I'll say, oh, it's a really nice day out, isn't it? And they'll say, oh, yes. And you can watch their body language shift and they like, they get more relaxed. And I'm also like throwing some jokes if they're really, I don't know, I kind of feel people out, but throwing some jokes and then kind of just lighten the mood because you know, some of this stuff is really serious. It's really heavy. So if you can take some of that edge off, that really helps a lot too. So I've, I found that very helpful. Um, another thing too is operating from your heart. A lot less thinking, more feeling. Really feel. They're, they're trusting you to like, to work with their soul. I mean, it's a very intimate process. Uh, they're telling you stuff that they've never told anyone. They're opening up to you. They're sharing with you. They're being vulnerable. And if you're not coming from your heart, if you're if you're coming from your mind, oh, now I got to read this, and then we have to go through this. Like it's a it's a way different vibration. People aren't going to get as much as they could out of it. All right. The other thing is your confidence. If you don't believe that <laughs> you're going to be successful, you don't believe you can help them. That's what's going to happen. Um, even if you have no clue what you're doing or don't know what's going to happen, be confident in, in the bigger picture. Um, really so much, so little, this is actually, you. there's so much more happening on all these different levels and where they're at. And you can kind of just kind of hand that over the same trust that you're putting into the universe is you can put that trust out there. You don't have to do so much and you kind of detach from that. All right, so your, your confidence is huge. I am very confident in my ability to help people. As far as the outcome, I don't know what that's gonna look like. Uh, that's another thing too, is not getting too attached to the outcome. Whether, it's, whether it turns out awesome or whether it, they go back and they just go right to back to the same stuff they were doing, don't get so attached to it. It's not your story, not your stuff. So letting go of that also takes some of that weight off and just have fun with this. All right, another big thing is to meet them where they're at. Don't push your beliefs on them. Well, this is how this works, or there is no hell, or there is, don't tell them any of that stuff. That's your beliefs, that's your belief system, that's your truth, that's not where they're coming from. Meeting them where they're at is huge, because if you're pushing them too far out of that, they're not gonna get what they need out of this in the way that they need it. So just meeting them where they're at, and really coming from, because everyone's gonna have different beliefs, different backgrounds. I've worked with atheists and nuns, and it doesn't matter. As long as you're not like trying to shove your stuff on them, they'll do just fine. Okay. Um, also, coming from a place of non-judgment is huge. If if and this may not be even anything you say, but if that you're gonna hear some awful stuff doing this, <laughs> let's just be honest. Okay, but if you're coming from a place where they tell you something, you're like, oh, uh, like they're gonna be feeling that and they're gonna shut down. Just be open, listen. And, and just acknowledge them and just be there, hold that space for them. Um, 
even that mental judgment, they're going to be picking up on that. They're going to be feeling that and they're going to close off. And that's not what you want. You want them to feel safe and that it's okay. It um, doesn't matter how bad it is. And the more you do this, the easier it gets because you can see things from that higher perspective where you acknowledge and just recognize that it's all just lessons, all just experiences. I'm at the point now where someone could tell me they killed a bunch of kids and I'm like, well, what'd you learn? <laughs> There's like no judgment at all because you can see this higher perspective. There's always more. You know, there's always more to the story and there's a bigger picture with all of it. So it, that part does get easier as you go on. But just know they're picking up on whatever you're thinking, whatever you're feeling, because you're so enmeshed in this process. All right. Um, then the um, when they get there, I ask them kind of what is their main reason for wanting to do this today? Uh, that's aside from their questions like, well, why are you here? <laughs> um that's a big thing because that's going to kind of help you to navigate to see what they need out of today, what they need most out of today. Uh, the other stuff is bonus, but what does that major shift look like? Because if when you focus on that, a lot of the other stuff ripples out from there and trickles through other parts of their lives. So by addressing that thoroughly, you'll get more out of it. All right. Um, and then I kind of just give them a rundown briefly, kind of what to expect. Um, I do have a video out there that, that helps. Um, what to expect during a quantum healing session, which also helps, but I can just kind of run through this briefly, a brief rundown of the process, some tips to get the most out of our time together. And then I also do a little exercise. Um, and I want to thank Lorna Wilson for this exercise. It's been awesome. So especially people that are like, oh, I don't think I can do this. Like half the people show up thinking that. If they go in with that expectation, cuts them off from the magic. So this is, I'm going to walk you through this one. So I just have them close their eyes. You can do this with me, see how it is. So this is so cool. Um, so just have them close their eyes. All right, take a big deep breath. And then just imagine they have a ball in their hands. Just say, imagine you have a ball in your hands. All right, and then begin passing. Tell them it could be a baseball, basketball, give them some suggestions, any kind of ball really, or something totally different. All right, and just begin passing the ball from hand to hand. And then tell me what you notice about the ball, the size, the color, the texture, the weight. What do you notice? And they may, may be seeing, well, saying, well, I don't see it, but I feel that it's a softball and I know it's a softball. Awesome. Tell, re -encourage, encourage that. Go with that first impression. Awesome job. Okay. All right. And then tell them to begin throwing the ball up in the air and catching it. And as they do that, something about the ball changes. What changes? And then just imagine the ball drifts and floats, or becomes a balloon and drifts and floats away. When it's completely out of sight, you can simply open your eyes. All right, right in that thing, right in that little exercise that did so much. You can watch your body language change. Everyone can do this. I haven't had anyone that can do this, but they're like, oh my gosh, I can do this. Their confidence boosts. Uh, they can see how it is. And I also re remind them, I'm like, and that's what that state feels like. Well, that didn't feel like anything. Exactly. Because that, that limits, that cuts off like some of those expectations. Oh, some of those expectations go out the window then. Because they can, they're like, oh, that's all it was. <laughs> and they realize how easy that is. So um, a lot of things wrapped into that one. Uh, they also can see kind of how they'll get information. I, re I reinforce that, oh, I gave you some suggestions. Um, most of the people don't even take them, but I didn't tell them what to see. I didn't tell them how it would change. And they did all that. So that's kind of how things will evolve during this process. So very, very powerful. And from there, they're just like, you can watch their whole demeanor change, their energy change, just by going through that little exercise. They've also turned that focus inward. And that was another huge thing. So just a lot rolled into that. Some people actually start going through other stuff just by, by going through that. So they'll actually start shifting into these, like, into what I would call the session <laughs> just by going into that. Um, I also reinforce that our time together isn't the session. Stuff has been happening. Uh, it's going to keep happening. Uh, one thing that I actually uh, failed to mention too is before the session, the night before, I put out the intention to work with the person 
in the astral plane, uh, in the dream state, and it's amazing. <laughs> Since I started doing that, I started having dreams about other people's past lives. I've um, people are already like so warmed up and just ready to go by the time they get to me that we can really move through a lot together. And I really didn't know, like, I'm like, is this even a thing? And I didn't know that was a thing until people started telling me about the dreams I had about them the night before. <laughs> They're like, oh yeah, remember what we were working on? I was like, I do. <laughs> so way more connected and just putting that out, that intention out ahead of time. Oh my gosh. And it doesn't have to be much. I intend to work with so-and-so for them to um, get the most out of our session tomorrow. It can be that simple. 20 seconds, not even. All right, game changer. Um, and then I, after I kind of go through stuff and kind of show them what to... Um, what do we all experience? I asked them if there was any questions, concerns, any worries, and by that time they've kind of like they've kind of let stuff down, or maybe they've they let their guard down. But they'll maybe they'll have they'll tell you share with something they've heard, or I've heard some crazy stuff. Uh, one person said, "Well, what if I don't come back?" <laughs> they thought they were gonna die when they did this, or that was a possibility. Um, one guy actually came to my house and put down a tarp on the bed because he thought he was going to lose control of his bodily functions. Um, I've heard it all, so um, it's easy. It's nice to get those out of the way and address those very early on. All right, um, because those are going to be walls that you're going to have to like try to climb over. And once those are out of the way, I like to make my job as easy as possible. So when we're when we get to the actual like guided part, it's way easier. All right. Um, then during like what I call like the interview part, uh, that's where we're actually, um, I just kind of let them talk, L listen, if they need like little nudges, I'll kind of ask them about their childhood. I'll ask them about their relationship with their siblings, their parents, what their parents, uh, what their parents relationship was like, um, any significant relationships, stuff like that. Um, and once you, once you kind of learn this process, uh, it does get easier. So you can, you, I don't know, I have a pretty good feel for this and I have a pretty good handle on stuff. And really, they're all just stories, but the neat thing about that is they start connecting the dots right away just by talking about some of this stuff. You'll see them have like aha moments just by talking it out. And what that does is kind of bubble stuff to the surface. Um, I also like to shift, like I said before, shift them to the feeling. Oh my gosh, that happened. Well, how did you, how did that make you feel? <laughs> what were you feeling in that moment? And they'll start, they'll start pulling these words out. Pay attention to those words. Those are going to be key words for you to use later on um, because they're tapping into that, that inner feeling. And that's really where the magic lies. All right. Um, then we'll, we go over their questions at the end of that. Um, most of them have already come up, but we just kind of look for any clarity, take a bathroom break. And then during the, the second part of the session, um, that's the part that I record. I Before we start, I actually... Take a moment to connect with my higher self, my team, my guides. It kind of looks like I'm taking, uh, making, like I'm praying. Uh, I can, I let them do whatever they want to do. I say some people say a prayer here. Some people say what intentions they want. Some people just breathe or connect with who they need to connect with. So whoever, whatever, whatever they do is fine because they're taking that moment of silence. Because what happens is when we shift to that second part, people get start to get anxious again. So just having them laying there breathe for a little while, they just they just calm right back into that. Um, and that shifts that focus inwards. Uh, one of the then I go over some of the reminders after that, um, just briefly. Um, and those are like letting go of expectations. Say the first thing that comes to mind. Describe things in detail and talk, 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 talk. <laughs> um, so that that's really important. And I tell them if they get too worked up, I want them as well, if they get too worked up during this, the easiest way to reset their mind, their body is just with a big deep breath, and that just resets them right back into that. All right, I do let them know that they are in control. If they won't need anything during that, I want this them as comfortable as possible. If they have to get up and go to the bathroom, that I encourage them to do so, so they're not focused on that. And really, that actually works to your advantage because they go through this process of fractionation. They open their eyes, they like they come out of it, and they like actually go in actually deeper after they come back from the bathroom. And sometimes you need that just to break up things, and it works really really well. Um, but just kind of let them know they're in control without having to control it. And that kind of like lets their guard down. Like, oh, I can just tell you if I don't want to do this. And you can see them shift at just even telling them that. All right. Um, I do also explain to them in, in my sessions, I like to connect to their higher self. Um, I explain to them what higher self is because uh, some people don't know what that is. So tell them it's like their gut feeling, their intuition, their um, 
inner voice. Some people call it spirit. Some people call it their oversoul. Um, I know there's different um, differentiations, but in terms of this, it's kind of all the same thing. It's this higher guidance. And what we call it, what we label it is unimportant. It's basically this higher guidance that's always guiding them and that energy that stays connected to everything. So I tell them that this is always there. And in this process, we basically just turn down the static to listen to that guidance a little bit closer. Uh, if I do ask to speak to their higher self, though, them saying yes just allows that shift in focus to take place. Um, a lot of times people are waiting for something to come and answer or they get really hung up on, was that me? Was that my higher self? doesn't matter. That's the, it's the level of information coming through and, and that guidance. So, And we'll talk about that in a little bit. All right. Um, a big thing that I did uh, in the beginning of my sessions is breathe. So very early on when I started doing this, I learned how important breathing was to to shifting this focus inward and, and the success of these of getting people into this state. So I just do a couple of big deep breaths and um, reinforce that each time they they exhale, they'll actually relax deeper. Um, and that they feel their body relax more and more and more. And I just have them follow that breath from the top of their head to their feet, and that just relaxes their whole body. And even people that check out or they're out of their body, that pulls them back in. So, all right. And then another big thing I do is intentions. Right before that, um, you can make up your own intentions. The ones I use are, and I have them say this out loud, and I'll explain that in a second. So, um, that I'm open to receive messages. I'm open and ready for healing, and this session will change my life in a powerful way. And I have them repeat those, and so that does a couple things while they're doing that. They're putting that out to the universe. They're saying it. They're saying what they want, but also I'm doing a mic check <laughs> while we're doing that too. So I'm watching the levels, making sure everything's good, making sure everything's situated, so we don't get into it, and then I'm like, okay, I have to adjust everything while you're in it now. So that's very helpful. All right. Um... I also tell, I also explain uh, how easy it is to visualize. I'll say something like, in a moment I'm going to show you how easy it is to visualize. Um, you actually do this all the time. Anytime you bring up a memory, read a book. Um, you do, so imagine you're reading a book and the author is describing a little boy in blue jeans, white shirt, blonde hair, sitting by the river. Um, can you imagine that? People can always imagine stuff. So um, everyone can do that and they raise how easy it is. And I say, so in the beginning, it's like I'm telling you a story. So just simply help yourself by imagining in as much detail as you can as I tell you the story. It's so easy. You'll do just great. And then, um, then we get into the induction part. And really, it doesn't matter the induction. You can... <laughs> I thought I was really hung up on like, oh, I've got to say all these words. And oh my gosh, I missed a part. And really, it doesn't matter that much. Um... If you, I would say learn an, uh, an induction, learn a script, but then feel it. Um, so I actually move my hands like this in a figure eight. And what that does is it helps me to say what I need to say. <laughs> and it really doesn't matter what you're saying because they'll follow you anywhere by this point. Put throw in some nice suggestions and, and you're off. Um, I also sometimes rock like this and then kind of just feel into it that way. And what I'd notice is um, you'll actually be uh, kind of dropping with them. If you're breathing with them, I, I, I pace with them. So I'm watching their breath and it's so funny when, when you get into it, they won't even know they're doing it, but take a big deep breath and watch. A lot of times they'll take a big deep breath with you. It's, it's so cool to see. So you just kind of pace with the person and and you're off. I'm not going to go too much in the induction, but that's a, a um, just a pretty good overview of any induction. I want to keep this kind of vague. So um, In the beginning, I was so anxious to get through the visualization part and just hurry up and get to the higher self because I kind of saw the other stuff as, well, what's the point? Everything is just to get to this higher self. But really, that higher guidance is there all the time. And you can just ask for it. <laughs> like, it, it can come through in all different ways. It can come through their younger self, their older self. It can come through um, other loved ones. It can come through, um, it can come through colors or sound. It doesn't matter. But really, that, that guidance is always there. And you can pull out so much information, even in the beginning. Um, 
Another another way they'll kind of shift things is just kind of either pull them outside the body or have them see it from a different perspective. And and oh, what what advice would you give yourself? <laughs> Knowing what you know now, what advice would you give that little girl? And and they can figure stuff out for themselves. It doesn't matter that it comes from the higher self or not, or where it comes from, because they're telling you the same stuff that you'd get later on. So I used to get really hung up on that part, and I realized that the whole session can be like that. So um, pretty amazing, and that's that is the dance of doing this. That's, that's the art of doing this, and that part just gets easier. Um, and I do like to have them tap into the feelings, have them tap into the emotions, have them uh, have them tap tap into everything. I want them to get out of the analytical mind. All right. So when they shift that focus inward, uh, they can get into out of that analytical mind. And because you can't make up a feeling, how are you feeling? Well, where do you feel that in your body? Like that shifts that focus inward. Okay. And then get some out of that in analytical mind. Another thing I do to shift them out, if they're like, um, if they're really analytical I'll, or just trying to like, I don't know, force an answer. I'll have to take a big deep breath and then as they exhale, just tell me whatever comes to mind first. When I ask them the next question, whatever comes to mind first. If they're really struggling, I have them open their eyes and <laughs> uh, take a breath and just come out of it and then close their eyes again and just and reset. And what that does is, well, you talked about that fractionation process where your eyes will just um, opening and closing your eyes will actually pull you deeper into that into that trance state. Um, I also reassure them that they don't have to relive anything. You don't have to drag them through anything again. If they're sitting there screaming, have, a ta have them take a deep breath and reassure them that they don't have to relive that trauma. They, they're on the other side of it. Have them take a breath and just shift out of that body. And I'd be amazed at how... Um, how they can see they can see exactly what they need without having to relive it. So the main thing is seeing how it impacted you and what what impact that had on their life. What were they telling themselves in that moment that's still that they're still carrying with them today? And that's really that's really what it is because these are all just stories that they're attached to. Um, another way to have them shift into the feeling is I have them merge their consciousness. Um, so it, this is so easy and I just have them just breathe into the body that you want them to see the perspective of. And it's like, it's kind of like walking into a warehouse and all the information's there, but where you're going to shine the flashlight in <laughs> that warehouse is what you can tap into. And it really is that e easy. A lot of times I'll do this with the breath and whoosh, they're right there. All right. Um, another thing is to follow your intuition. Um, so don't lead them, but you're being given you're being given this information. <laughs> so follow your own guidance, follow your own uh, gut feeling on this. Uh, there is no like having to do it the right way. And when you start doing that, they end up getting a lot more out of out of these sessions. As you tap into more of this, it's harder to <laughs> like not lead them because you're like, oh, I already know the answer. But use that to help you ask a better question rather than oh, it's this. Okay. Um, and then another thing is to ask open-ended questions. Um, not yes-no questions, but stay curious. Just ask everything. Um, this is a perfect job for me because I want to know everything, so <laughs> just ask, I love asking questions. I always feel like a two-year-old when I'm doing this. But why? But why? Well, why is that? <laughs> um, and you'll, you'll get so much more out of this by keeping this open-ended. All right, if you do get stuck, ask for help know that you're not doing this alone. <laughs> so you can either ask it out loud, you can have them ask. Um, one thing I'll ask if there's any um, any beings of light or any any helpers that would like to come forward to assist in this process. And if they can, they can ask. So it really is that easy. Just ask. You don't get what you don't ask for. And almost always someone shows up, oh, angels showed up, or there's this bright white light around me that's going through my body. Cool. If you didn't ask for that, that wouldn't have happened. <laughs> like, so sometimes all you have to do is, is ask. Um, before that too, if they have a lot of stuff, sometimes I'll take them to just a, a healing place, whatever they consider a healing place. Take them there and then ask someone to come forward. Um, sometimes they'll come through as sound. Sometimes they'll come through as God. Um, whatever it is, uh, just ask. And you'd be amazed at the stuff that happens. Another big thing is when you get this stuff, say thanks. Gratitude is huge in this, even in life too. Um, when you say thank, thank you, like so many, 
so many things unfold from that. So that's a huge thing too. Stay in that attitude of gratitude and allow and have them be a part of that too. I'll feel that love, feel that gratitude from your heart. All right. Um, well, this is getting a little bit longer than I thought, but <laughs> uh, there's just so much stuff that I'd love to share. So a lot of these are questions I get all the time, so I'm trying to pack it all into one thing. But I also do this kind of spiritual makeover process at the end. Um, so I initially learned to do a body scan with people, scan their body. So I have, um, and this is, you can do any time, but I'll have, I like to do it at the end mostly because it's kind of going through cleaning up the pieces, anything we missed. But I'll ask um, their higher self and any other beings of light to assist in this process. And I just tell them all they have to do is allow. They don't have to understand what all this stuff is, but just to allow this process to unfold. So we do a body scan. I do an energy scan, uh, clearing of the energy centers and aura. And then also do a mental scan, restructuring, reorganizing, rewiring things in their mind. Um, and whatever's for their highest good. Uh, toxins, metals, bacteria, viruses, parasites, that stuff. Um, restore the organs and mind. Um, and then uh, DNA activation. Release past, current, and future life trauma. Um, old beliefs, emotions, memories, old programming. Uh, and doing this, um, whatever's for their highest good, I say that at the end of most of these things. Um, any contracts, promises, vows, agreements, bonds, pacts, um, any entities and energetic attachments to people, places, things. And then, um, then we fill in any empty spaces, any voids with that divine source presence within them and unconditional love. And while we're doing that, um, also unlocking any and unblocking any gifts or abilities that they're currently ready to receive or remember as well as any upgrades downloads activations frequencies uh, that they're currently ready for because their mind body and spirits in a perfect state to receive and integrate those at this time um whew. <laughs> I, I might go through those in so those are all things that have come through other people's sessions that i've kind of incorporated uh I don't even know what that, I don't even understand all of them, but like people that have like regrown organs and stuff, uh, they, their higher self said, oh yeah, their DNA is activated enough. We're just going to grow a new one. And then two months later and it's back. So yes, I'm going to start asking for that. <laughs> um, I talked to someone else and they put in a thing for like meridians and stuff like that. But um, take this, make it your own. Uh, these are my suggestions. These are the things that I've learned. Um, but you can incorporate these into so many areas of, of your work with people. So hopefully you found this beneficial and please share this with other people that you know uh, could benefit from this. Uh, any other people that work with clients, anyone that does energy work, uh, a lot of good information in here. And I don't have it all figured out. <laughs> these are what I've, This is what I've learned in the last couple of years, the last, I don't know. Um, I mean, I have worked with hundreds and hundreds of clients but this is kind of where I'm at now and I'm, I'm constantly learning and growing. This is like, this is like a never ending process. So this is what I know today. Uh, take what you want, take what you can use and leave the rest. And if you have any suggestions of your own, I'd love to hear them, put them in the comments because I think all of us working together, that's where the magic is. And when we start working together, like we can help so many more people and that's really what this is all about. So, um, thank you so much for joining me on this and we'll see you on the next video.